So today I'd like to take a look at Breeze and how to modify a SQL database from JavaScript. There are two components, Breeze.js and Breeze Sharp. Sharp's kind of the back end, JS the front end. A lot of cool stuff in here with caching and mobile and change tracking. Um, compatible with a lot of great systems, including SharePoint, Angular, jQuery, Knockout. Those, those some I'm more familiar with. So, you know, definitely something to check out. And without further ado, let's get into it. Here we have a SQL database with two tables, property and review. The schema is pretty simple. Uh, database is named appraisal, so this is for real estate values, kind of keeping up with uh, locations of property, and then um, the review of how much they're worth, on what different dates, and this is a one-to-many relationship. A property can be reviewed multiple times. That's our business background. Let's go ahead and spin up a new project. Empty web application for appraisal. All right, we're going to use Package Manager, and we're going to load a couple of different things. Uh, here's the first one, breeze.webapi2.ef6. Okay, and our next one to load is going to be angularjs.core, sort of the foundation. And let's see, we'll go ahead and get Toaster and Font Awesome. Okay, and the last thing is going to be breeze.angular. Excellent. So with all that, we added a bunch of things over here, some assembly references in .NET. That's going to help us do the breeze magic on the back end. Um, but we also have a number of JavaScript files. Kind of helps fill in our project a little bit. So let's go ahead and add some more stuff to our project. an HTML page, and we'll do a JavaScript file, and a style sheet. Okay, we'll add our script and style sheet to our page. We'll give our page the same title as our project, and I'll put an H1 down here with kind of a header footer. And we'll go ahead and set this to be the startup for our web project over here on the start page. Excellent. So we hit a five. We get a blank page that says appraisal. Now the question becomes how do we connect it to data? At this point, what we want to do is go ahead and add a new item. In the data section, we have ADO entity data model. I'll call this appraisal model. We'll design it from a database, make a new connection. We'll go out to SQL Express, refresh. Pick out our database. I like to turn off the pluralized names, keep my names simple, less to remember and think about. We'll pick out property and review. Those were our tables over here from our schema. All right, now personally, I like to change the namespace. Just click the background, hit F4 to match my web project. Makes the metadata a little bit simpler. And we want to make sure that our primary keys have the property of identity. That's for auto-generate. Looks good. Um, so okay, now we have a model, a data model that our project's aware of. Next step, we add a controller. appraisal controller and at this point I like to go look at the breeze documentation for their example on a to-do controller so we want to decorate the top part here before the declaration yep okay and I'm gonna just delete all of the contents and take everything from the example and bring it over do a lot of right click using Resolve using, resolve using, resolve using. Try to clean up some of those. All right, it needs to know about our data model. 
which is appraisal entities for context. And really, Breeze gives us three things. Metadata, your entity, and save changes. The middle part we need to change. So let's take out to-do item, and let's put in property, because that was the name of one of our tables. But it's not the only one. So let's duplicate, make another one here. And this one is going to be named review, because that was our other table in our context. And we can go ahead and build. Succeeded. Fantastic. We're up and running with a web API controller. That's amazing. So we'll hit F5 to go ahead and run it. Take this URL over to REST Postman. Clean things up a bit. It's actually the syntax is Breeze, the name of your controller slash metadata. Excellent. So we get a 200 OK successful. And down here we have a description of our tables with all of their attributes and their data types, along with if it's an identity column, you know, for auto generating an ID. Absolutely amazing. Efficient, lean, but this is a description of the full schema, including foreign key, which we can see at the bottom. So the metadata is there. And if we do slash property, we get back an empty collection. That's actually a get to the table. Table just happens to be empty. So if we edit and we do main street, go and save a record, do the get again, we now have a JSON representation of our SQL data coming back over Breeze with a nice easy get. Um, couldn't be any easier than that. All right, so we can see our data. Uh, we'd like to put that into our project. That's next. Over here in our HTML view, we want to go ahead and wire up our app and our controller. Let's try to put those together. Appraisal app, appraisal CTL, close out the two divs. Okay, so here we put together appraisal app and appraisal controller. I put test between the handlebar, braces, and made a simple controller for scope test equals hello, and just to go ahead and wire things up as a placeholder. It says Angular is undefined, and sure enough it is. We should add our references up top. Okay, so here we've added all of our script files in the header, and we'll reload. Appraisal CTL test. Oh, this should be ng controller right there. There we go. Now we can see the hello. So that lets us know that our Angular controller is active and it's wired up correctly. Now we can work on adding a layout for displaying some data tables. Okay, so here we've added uh, property.length just to show anything that's in the array of properties. And here's our table for rendering out all the properties we have. We're repeating it. Uh, we are showing a delete button on the left, and then a card format, which comes with the details for ID, city, loan officer status, all using handlebar syntax, except for street name, which uses an input. So that gives us a bit of a rendering, but there's really, there's no data here yet. So the next thing is gonna be to go ahead and hook up some CRUD operations and try to get that read operation going first. Okay, so here we've added a line for manager, VM managers, Breeze entity manager, and this Breeze appraisal is the same URL we had over here for where to get our metadata discovery. So when we open up entity manager, it's going to get the metadata and understand the entities. From there, I made a refresh function, which uses entity query to say the name of the entity or table appraisal, and it also wants to expand review. Now that's actually property for our first entity and then expand review. So we're saying select everything from here but tell me about the children. So if it has any you know, one-to-many relationships we'll have access to that. So that looks pretty good for our refresh function. We want to make sure that we call it when the controller is loaded. It's 
syntax gets, looks good, but we're not getting back data. And it's because of dependency injection. We need to go tell our controller and our module that we are in fact using Breeze, we're leaning on it, and we have a dependency there. Okay, now we get back data. So the key was to add Breeze to the controller and to add Breeze.Angular to the module, and this is for DI, or dependency injection, to let Angular know we have this dependency, I, I need Breeze to be there before running the other functions. Um, so cool, okay, we're able to see our record, and we're gonna do a select over here on the left for comparison. Matches up, looks really good actually. Um, cool, okay, so that's the read operation. And if we want to build out all of CRUD for, you know, updates and deletes and all of that, we're going to need a few more of these. We'll need one for delete, we'll need one for add, we'll need one for save, and we're going to put some buttons down here at the bottom for that. Okay, so here we have some buttons, refresh, add, save, with our different verbs, and... So here we have some buttons, refresh, add, and save with our different verbs. We come over and reload the GUI, and we can now see those down here at the footer. Very nice. And it's time to go ahead and wire them up with a method for what they need to do. Okay, so delete takes in an object, the current row we're looking at, and it hits entity aspect set deleted. So this is a way of marking things, um, kind of a change tracking, and then when they're saved, it'll go push to the database. But this gives us the ability to mark things as deleted on the front, and then save them and commit to the back. Okay, so here we have our add method, and so what we're doing is specking out a JSON, uh, initial values variable, just sort of what the defaults are, and then we're hitting create entity with the table name and those initial values. Pretty straightforward, but that essentially puts it into the table. And then of course, same thing as delete, we need a save method to take all this client side memory changes and go ahead and batch them and push them to the server. Unfortunately, the save method is probably the easiest of all. We simply go to the manager and do dot save changes. So those are the functions we have, and we can now give it a test. Well, with the SQL select on the left and our interface on the right, um, let's try to add and save. And look at that. We've got a new row using our defaults with an auto-incremented ID number. That was part of our identity specification on the EDMX model. It picked up automatically from SQL, but we just want to make sure that's working correctly. We don't do anything with generating ID numbers. We simply tell it save with the fields on the right and then SQL takes care of the ID number for us. Uh, let's do like one, two, three ads, save, refresh. SQL on the left, we added three rows, all in a single save. Let's delete, 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 add, add, save. We deleted the four rows we had before, and now we created two new ones, and you can tell that because the ID numbers are um, incrementing and there's a bit of a gap. Um, let's go ahead and do an update. Save, and we change the street names. So the update scenario is working, delete scenario is working, add, and of course refresh. That's it. We have all four CRUD operations. And the beauty of it is that our JS file is about 40 lines, the HTML file is about 60 lines. So for a hundred lines of text, we are editing a SQL database in JavaScript. That's just incredible. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.